In this video, we're going to talk about how to tell if a figure is a rhombus. So in order to prove that a quadrilateral is a rhombus, you must show that it's a parallelogram first. And you could do so by showing that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. You can also prove that it's a parallelogram if the opposite sides are congruent to each other, or if the opposite angles are congruent. Another option is showing that the opposite sides are congruent and parallel at the same time. Now once you prove that it's a, a parallelogram, you could show it's a rhombus if a pair of consecutive sides are congruent. Or if you could show that a diagonal bisects the angles into two congruent parts. That's also a rhombus. Now another way in which you can prove it's a rhombus without proving that it's a parallelogram first is if you can show that the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So let's call this E. So you have to show that this is a right angle and also that AE and EC are congruent and BE and ED are congruent. If you could do that, you don't have to show that ABCD is a parallelogram. So let's work on an example in this problem. So I should have kept the same figure. Let's say this is ABCDE. And you're given the following information. So let's say that AB is congruent to DC, and also that angle BAC is congruent to DCA. And let's say also angle BAE is a right angle. So with this information, go ahead and prove that the figure is a rhombus. So show that A, B, C, D is a rhombus. So let's start with a two column proof. So let's start with our given statement that A, B is congruent to DC. So this is given to us, and we can make the following marks. So AB is congruent to DC. Now the second thing that we know is that angle BAC is congruent to angle DCA. And so that's given to us as well. So this is BAC, and this is uh, DCA. So this angle is congruent to that angle. Now we know that these two angles are congruent to each other. They form vertical angles. So we could say that angle AEB is congruent to angle CED. And the reason, the vertical angle theorem, we could say that vertical angles are congruent. So now we can prove that these two triangles are congruent. So let's say that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle CED. And the reason for this, it's the angle angle side postulate. And this is based on statements 3, 2, and 1. So now that we've shown that those two triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts must be congruent as well. So therefore, we could say that AE and EC are congruent. 
and this is based on CPCC CPCTC. There we go. Now we could also say, let's use two marks to distinguish it from that one. We could say that uh, BE is congruent to ED because they're still part of this, the two triangles that we've proven to be congruent. And this is also due to CPCTC. So now, step seven, what else can we say? Now keep in mind that we also have this given statement. Angle BAE is a right angle, and that's given to us. So that means this is a 90 degree angle. So now we can also say that AC is the perpendicular bisector of BD. As you can see, AC splits BD into two equal parts and it meets BD at a right angle. And also, BD does the same thing for AC. It's the perpendicular bisector of AC. And so I'm going to write definition of a perpendicular bisector. So now that we've shown that the diagonals, they bisect each other at right angles, now we can make the statement that ABCD is a rhombus. And for the reason, I'm going to write definition of a rhombus. Now let's work on another example. Let's prove that this figure is a rhombus. So here's what we're given. We're given that angle A is congruent to angle C, and also that angle B is congruent to angle D. And we're also told that angle BAC is congruent to angle BCA. So with this information, prove that ABCD is a rhombus. So let's start with the information that we're given. So number one, we know that angle A is congruent to angle C, and that's given to us. So this is angle A, that's angle C. Number two, angle B is congruent to angle D, and that's also a given statement. So we can mark that here. So notice that the opposite angles are congruent. So therefore, we can say that ABCD is a parallelogram. If the opposite angles are congruent, then we have a parallelogram. So we can write definition of a parallelogram, or you can say if opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now let's move on to our next given statement, and that's angle BAC is congruent to angle B, C, A. So this is B, A, C, and this is B, C, A. So B, A, C is congruent to B, C, A. And that's another given statement. Now notice that we have an isosceles triangle. So if the base angles are congruent, then the opposite sides must be congruent. So in the next statement, we could say that BA is congruent to BC. And the reason for that, we could say, so if the base angles are congruent, then the opposite sides must be congruent.
Now, once we show that this figure is a parallelogram, which we did in step 3, and also if consecutive sides are congruent, then the figure is a rhombus. So now we can make the final statement that ABCD is a rhombus. And the reason? We can write definition of a rhombus. So if it's a parallelogram, and if two consecutive sides are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. And so that's all I got for this video. Hopefully gave you some good ideas on how to prove if a quadrilateral is a rhombus or not.